Hey everybody, my name is Jason Wing. I'm on staff with Apex as the Growing Ministries team lead. And uh, my job is basically to give leadership, encouragement, and support to all the house church shepherds in our house church network. My story begins kind of similarly to um, you know many people. I'm a church kid. I grew up kind of in the church my whole life. I uh, have great Christian parents, godly. When I was nine years old, I went to a church camp. And uh, man, that was the first time I remember really um, wanting to be saved and to know what it meant to have Jesus as my Savior. And so I remember this guy was preaching and his name was Joaquin Dumas. And uh, he finished his sermon and um, he asked, you know, who, if anybody there wanted to trust Jesus as Savior. And so I went and uh, I talked to him and told him about um, my desire. And so it was at that point that uh, I really wanted Jesus as my Savior. My whole life, you know, was really isolated and insulated, you know, within the church and uh, within Christian environments. Outwardly, I was doing a lot of the right things, uh, even though inwardly, to be honest, I was really a mess. I graduated from my Christian high school and did the Christian thing and went to a Christian college here in Ohio. And, uh, you know, had a good experience there, but the reality is that um, my Christian faith was still based on outward behavior. My junior and senior year of college were just horrible. And so by the end of my senior year in college, what I had understood as the Christian life um, completely fell apart for me because all the good things that I knew I was supposed to be doing, I had stopped doing. And all the bad things that I never thought I would ever do when I was growing up, now I had done them all. And um, my understanding of Christianity was just warped and inwardly I was a mess because uh, man I had kind of betrayed everything that I thought was the Christian faith. My brother Phil had came down to this college as a freshman and I was there as a senior and as soon as he got there as a freshman he got really involved in this little church. Um, it actually it wasn't even a church yet it was a small college and singles ministry called Apex and uh, he kept trying to get me to come and come and I kept pushing him away because at this point in my life I wanted nothing to do with God and was really bitter towards the church and uh, he kept inviting me to come and I would say no and so uh, one day my brother um, was getting involved with the youth group at this church and he didn't have anybody to drive any vans uh, for their youth ministry program and I was old enough to rent and drive a van so he called me and asked if I would be a chaperone for a paintball event for the youth group and so uh, he didn't have anybody else, so I love my brother, so I said yes to him. And um, that's when God started opening my eyes. Um, and through a series of uh, other events, right after I graduated college, God really got my attention. One of my college roommates who I had lived with and done life with for the past four or five years uh, was driving in his car right here, not too far from here in Dayton. And um, man, he uh, was on a lot of substances and shouldn't have been driving and he uh, flipped his car and he rolled it and um, man you know I'll never forget getting that phone call saying hey you know Jeff is in the hospital and um, it was really hard to see my friend that way and uh, they had to put him in an induced coma so that the swelling on his brain could go down and they said he'd be in that coma for about a month may or maybe more and so I had had a backpacking trip scheduled to go to Europe and so I decided to go ahead and go on that backpacking trip and hopefully by the time I would come home, you know, that he would be out of his coma. And uh, I went on that backpacking trip and just a few days into the trip, I got a voicemail telling me that my friend Jeff had passed away. So I got an emergency plane ticket and I flew home and I went to his funeral. And um, that was the first time that I had come face to face with death uh, for somebody who I really knew and loved and was my age and at that funeral that's where God broke me down man I'm not really an emotional guy or a, a teary guy but at that funeral I remember crying my eyes out and just thinking God someday I'm gonna be the one in the grave someday it's gonna be me in that hole in the ground and uh, what will my life have mattered will it have mattered at all and um, God really got my attention through that and I went to his funeral and, and things started to change for me. So 
I actually, after his funeral, I flew back to Europe. And uh, while I was on that trip in Europe, I'll never forget sitting on this mountaintop in Edinburgh, Scotland, looking over the whole city. And uh, while I was there looking over the whole city, I remember it's like in that moment, that's when God really spoke to, to me, I believe. And he said, Jason, if you will surrender your life to me, I'll use it. I'll use it for my glory. And uh, I remember thinking, God, how could you use a guy like me? Sexual impurity, a life of thievery, a life of some serious crime. Uh, uh, you know, I deserved to kind of be in jail by that time and uh, for a lot of the things that I had done. And uh, yet at the same time, God just said, Jason, if you give me your life, uh, I'll use it for my glory. And so after that, I made a decision on that mountaintop in Edinburgh, in Edinburgh, Scotland, to live the rest of my days for Jesus Christ. And so I started getting really involved with my church, Apex. And, um, you know, it was amazing the way that God started to work. Um, they took me on this trip to Memphis, Tennessee in 2000. Uh, and it was simply called One Day. And at that One Day event, um, it was just one day of 24 hours of prayer and scripture reading and worship. And uh, at that event, there was a girl named Shelly, and she shared with me this verse that has changed my life. Um, out of the book of Micah, there's a verse that says, Who is a God like you, um, who delights to show mercy? And it goes on to talk all about how God will not hold our sin against us. He'll, he'll, he'll take our sin and cast it into the depths of the sea. And um, the point with me sharing that with you is that I grew up not believing that God was a God of mercy, but that He was only a God of justice. But when she shared that verse with me, it just showed me God delights to show us mercy. I, I didn't delight to show mercy to anyone, but God did, delighted to show mercy to me. And so all that junk that I had been a part of, all the sin that I had been doing, God delighted to show me His mercy. And so at that time, in 2000, at that event, at one day, I remember singing the song, The Wonderful Cross, and really understanding that on that cross where Jesus died, taking all of our sin on Himself, that that was His place where He delighted to show us mercy. And um, so that's where God really broke me down. And uh, just ever since then, I've been so appreciative of the cross and wanting to live my life in any way that Jesus um, and that God would put on my heart to live. And so uh, by His grace, He's opened many doors for me and got involved in youth ministry uh, for many years. And through that time, God brought me my wife, Rachel, who is such a godly woman. And um, now He's blessed me with two kids and still in ministry full time at Apex. And the role that I'm in now is just really unbelievable to where I was you know, eight or ten years ago, and I'm just so thankful for what God's done. And uh, I just want to encourage you. The scripture says that uh, if any man, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are gone, and all things have become new. And uh, that's God's story in my life. I started out religious, I thought I was good. I did a lot of crazy things, and I messed up my life. But by His grace, He saved me. He took all the old things, washed them away from my life, made me new, all by the sacrifice of His Son Jesus on the cross, in my place, for my sins, 2,000 years ago on the cross. And uh, because of that, Jesus Christ is now the supreme love of my life. My life verse now is Philippians chapter 2, verse 16, which uh, just has a little phrase that says, that I may boast on the day of Christ, that I did not run or labor for nothing. I don't want to waste my life. I want to stand before God someday and say, I didn't waste it. I did everything I could for you. And so uh, that's where I'm at now. Just want to live everything, every way that I can, I want to live for Jesus. And uh, that's the story of God's grace in my life.